What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Lure Painting with Zach Baker. I'm Zach Baker and today we're going to be showing you how to add your logo to a bait and how to do this cool crawl pattern. Now, I've made this video before. It was one of my early videos. I wasn't very good at explaining things. So I'm getting rid of the other one, redoing it, a little bit better explanation on stuff. I will have this linked in the very top of the description below. What I'm using is called water, de or water slide decal transfer paper. Now, you wanna make sure you get the transparent or the clear. They do have some available that's in white, meaning it has a white background to it. Uh, whereas we want it to be transparent, so it only shows whatever we print on it. The printer you want to use is an inkjet printer. Do not use a laser printer because those heat up and it will potentially ruin the paper itself. I get mine from Amazon, which is what the link below will be. I think it's around $20, I'll have to check, uh, but you get 20 sheets of paper. So I use Adobe Illustrator to make all my graphics and my logos and stuff like that. You can use something as simple as a Word document to print your your label. Now if you don't have a printer, the other option you can do is go to like Office Max or an office supply store like that where they have stuff available to print. Just make sure you tell them what the paper is for, that way they don't accidentally run it through a uh, laser printer and potentially mess up their printer. So today we're going to be putting the logo on the bait as well as doing a crawl pattern. Now I have this available on my website if you go to bakerbuildsusa.com which it will be linked below. You can scroll down to free downloads and print this off. This fits a 1.5 square bill. I've already got one painted in like an orange and red color, so I'll show that one at the end. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different because I like doing new things for some reason when I film videos, I don't know. Hopefully that answers some of the questions. This can be slightly tedious, and yes, I know you can get patterns or stencils made for it. This is just something kind of cool if you like creating your own illustrations or it can be something super custom because you cannot get this stencil pattern anywhere else in the world except for there or if you make your own it's completely original so yes you can get stencil patterns or you can get uh, stencils made to fit your bait whatever it is this is just something different i initially started using it to put my logo on the bait and then found out I could do some other cool stuff. But one last thing I forgot to say was after you print it, I always give it five to six really light clear coats with, uh, it's just Rust-Oleum, it's just a clear enamel. Now I had did have somebody a while back say something about their paper was getting soggy or was bumping, bubbling up or whatever. That means you're spraying way too much. It's really light coats. A good way you can practice this is grab a paper towel, lay it down, and do a real light pass on it. If the paper towel turns like a transparent, you're spraying too much. It should not really turn a transparent. You're just doing really light coats. Again, five to six light coats. After you print it, I let the paper sit for quite a while to make sure the ink is cured. Because if you print it, immediately spray it, it's gonna make your ink run if the ink isn't all the way cured yet. If there's any other questions, please ask them. I'll do my best to answer them. Something else I forgot to mention because that's how today is going. Uh, I just posted a video on how to prep a bait. And this one that I used in the video that I prepped is the one that we're going to be using to paint today. So it's already got the base coat of white on it. I'll have that linked down in the description below along with my website where you can go get the download. Bunch of stuff linked today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and paint this bait. Okay, since I already got the base coat of white on it, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first color. And we're just going to be doing two colors, potentially three, definitely two colors we're airbrushing. We might do some splatter later on with another color. First one I'm starting off with is a neon yellow, and I'm gonna go ahead and give the whole bait a nice coat in that. I'm gonna be doing like a light blue on the top half, but I don't want any of that white showing through, so that's why I'm gonna do the whole bait in the yellow. This is a really light color, so if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know I like to do several coats of it uh, to build it up. Several as in probably two. And then I'm gonna hit it with a hairdryer. On to that second coat. I just did two coats of that yellow. Uh, that's dry, I'm gonna move on to the next color, which is a Wicked Colors of the Createx paint, of the Createx paint, and it's a uh, transparent blue. Now I'm gonna do this, make the top a solid blue, and then just slightly fade it into the yellow. And 
It's gonna give us a little bit of a green on the side, but I'm okay with that. I think that's about all I'm going to do because it's gonna have that bold black uh, crawl pattern look on the side. Um, I might do a little bit of orange on the belly. I hope I don't regret it. We're gonna do just a little bit of this neon orange on right right here between the bill and that first eyelet. Just a little bit and a little bit on the tip at the back there. I gotta clean out the brush first. Since this is also a lighter color to really get it to be that neon, I'm gonna do it with the hair dryer and do it again. Okay, so I got all of my base colors on. So since this paper is a water slide transfer paper, it means we use water to get the design onto the bait. And since our paints are water-based paint, we gotta get some sort of clear coat on here, otherwise you have the potential of jacking up your entire paint job. So what I do is use the same Rust-Oleum uh, clear enamel spray to put on there, but it's very important that you gotta make sure that this is dry. I've hit it with the hair dryer. I'm also gonna let it air cure for just a little while. Otherwise, the spray paint and your, uh, your water-based airbrush paints are not gonna mix and it's gonna bubble your paint job. If it doesn't bubble the paint job, your paint's not gonna stick as good in the future. So I highly recommend some good dry time. It also helps if you're doing a bunch of baits or you go paint a different one, come back and do this one. Now, another question a bunch of people have asked me uh, if you can print your name in white. So if you painted a black bait and you're trying to put this on there in white, uh, yes, absolutely you could. Only problem is is finding a printer that can print white because most household printers are not going to do that. Uh, if you go somewhere, you might have to outsource that to find someone that could. If you do find a good source for that, let me know. I've also noticed using this on a darker colored bait, let's just say it's a dark blue, it seems like sometimes you can see a little bit of the clear paper on there. That's why I do like to cut them close to each other. I'm gonna let this air dry for a little bit and then give it a little a little light clear coat of this just to protect our paint while we're doing this. Uh, we are using water to transfer it, so I have a little cup that I use all the time. Uh, it's really important that it's warm water, not hot. I'll reiterate that, not hot water. If it's hot, you can tell because your little decals all gonna kind of fall apart. The ink's gonna come off of each other. It'll be a mess. You want like that, you know, critical point where your coffee's getting ready to turn room temperature and become disgusting. That's the warm you want. So warm water just above room temperature. It's gonna help dissolve the adhesive or the glue that's on there. Uh, it's just like putting together a model car or any sort of model that has those little decals that you stick in the warm water. Exact same thing. Only this one you can print whatever you want on it. So I'm gonna let this cure for just a little bit so I don't screw it up, give it a light coat, we'll come back and uh, put the decal on there. So since we have to wait for that to dry, I hit it with the hair dryer really good, but I'm gonna let it air dry just a little bit too before I spray it with that clear coat. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out uh, one of the crawl patterns. Now I have a whole sheet, maybe you guys can let me know what you'd prefer. Uh, if you would rather a little bit of each of the patterns once I get more on the website on one sheet, or if you're gonna do a whole list of crawl patterns, since this is about a dollar a sheet of paper, I was trying to fill it up as much as I could with the pattern. Uh, but we want a left and a right side, so I'm just gonna grab these two bottom ones, and we're gonna cut these out. Now, since the bait is curved, uh, I want the least amount of it that I have to, at least amount of the paper. I want it cut as close as I can to the pattern. That way, when you're trying to put a, uh, when you're trying to wrap this around a round surface, there's gonna be little corners that are gonna to wanna to stick up. So I'm gonna cut it pretty darn close to that pattern all the way down the back. And I'm not gonna to go too crazy trying to cut it around there, just pretty close. I guess if you wanted to, you could go in and individually cut these. My other thought with having a whole sheet of them is especially if it's your first time doing this, it's pretty easy to mess this up. Uh, so you have plenty of tries before you'd have to print some more. And then also keep in mind that unless there's a base coat of white on the printer, stuff like a gold or an orange might not show up as well on a bait since the paper is actually transparent. It's just got a white backing to it. So those are a couple things to keep in mind. Also, if anyone uses this pattern, 
and does a bait, I would love to see how it turned out. Uh, let, let me know, or you can post it in Tackling the Dream group on Facebook. Okay, I've got my warm water in the cup. I'm just going to grab one of these and set it down inside there. It might curl a little like that. Uh, that's okay. It'll straighten itself back out. Um, now, I actually... Oh, I meant to time it to see a rough idea on how long it's going to take. So we'll just add on a couple more seconds to that. Uh, so again, if your water's warmer or colder, it might take a little bit longer. I don't have an exact uh, formula for you for how long it should take. What you'll be able to see is the corners will start peeling off from the white paper. That's usually whenever I go ahead and take it out. So this piece is a lot bigger, so I let them sit in there a little bit longer. Now whenever I'm putting my name on the bait, uh, it's a really small piece just like this. It's just Baker build, so I would assume it'd be fairly similar for you. Those don't take near as long because it doesn't take much for the water to get down inside there. Something else I always have ready to go, so I got my tweezers to pull it out and lay it on there, and I've got a piece of paper or a little chunk of paper towel. And what I do is I get that just a little bit wet because we don't want all that moisture to pull out of it. We're going to use that to wipe it off. And whenever I set this on here, which this is actually backwards uh, than the one we're getting ready to do, I will apply, apply pressure with my thumb and then pull out that white paper underneath, uh, which you'll see here in a second. Then it's just a matter of making sure it's all down. I also let that, once we get this one on, I'll let it dry for quite a while before I do the other side because your fingers will kind of stick to it or pull it off. It also wouldn't hurt to wear some little rubber gloves when doing this step to avoid the oil in your fingers, but I'm not terribly concerned about that at this point. So I'm gonna let this sit for another minute here. So it wasn't a full minute because I can actually see the corners will start peeling up. When I do the other side, I'll try to get a shot of that when I'm not timing it uh, with my phone so you can see how the corners are peeling up. So it was about two minutes and 30 seconds or 45 seconds and my water is warmer. So that's a rough idea on how long it's gonna take to do that. Again, changing if your water is warmer or colder. But I like to grab from the backside. I'll just kind of shake off the big droplets of water. I'm going to lay it on the bait. Oop. It's important that you drop it. And I'm going to apply pressure with this thumb. Slide that out from underneath of it. And at this point, while everything's still wet, you can kind of push it around to make it match the bait, the shape of the bait. If you have a 1.5 that's the same as this one, that's how it's gonna sit on there. I'm gonna take my paper towel now, I'm keeping pressure with my left thumb, and I'm just gonna give it a nice little wipe. It's gonna pull out any water that's underneath of there, and also kind of push the, the pattern down onto the bait. You can kind of see, it, it can be very tedious, but it looks pretty cool. It's important whichever direction you're applying pressure that you have, uh, you have something holding it from the other direction. And I also, around these gill plates, because there's a bump, I'll just apply pressure straight down to kind of push it on there. That way there's not any air being able to get trapped underneath of there. I'm going to look at this closer really quick. So it looks really good to me. Something else you'll notice if your water is not warm enough is like around the gill plates or if you got a little crease, like if it kind of creases like that in a spot, when the water is warm enough, you can just kind of push it down on there and it'll seal or adhere to itself over top of it. Uh, if it's not warm enough, it won't let you do that. It'll kind of keep popping up. I'm really happy with the way that looks, so I'm going to leave this alone. I'm not going to hit it with a hairdryer or anything like that. I'm just going to let it air dry. We'll come back, do the other side, and then this bait will pretty well be done.